So in terms of production of producers, who have you gone into the studio with for your upcoming album? Um, I worked with um, obviously my cousin Harmony, who did. Oh, like, your cousin? Yeah, Harmony. Okay. So he did like all the Chris Brown, like Champion and In the Air, and all the, the Chris Brown and Chipmunk stuff. And um, Look for Me and Humanoid and I like about six other songs on the album. A guy called Inflow. He did Sergeant Smash and. Um, some other songs on the album as well. And I've also been working with a lot of Swedish guys. Um guy called Antor. He did like um, Impossible for Chantel and loads of stuff. Um, and Quiz and La Rossi as well. Just, yeah, not that many people. It's kind of very minimal, like under like five, six producers. And so, yeah, that would be it. So now you're saying, so what was it like for you how, how how's the transition been? No pun intended. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unsigned to being signed. Um. Well, I was at uni, oh. studying business and law. I went Kingston. Oh, okay. And um. So, I was doing that and music at the same time. To be honest, I was in the studio more than I was at my lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mum. Um, but you know. Um. But yeah. So I always loved music, and my heart was always hundred percent in music more than anything. And I had the plan A is to make it, plan B is to make it men mentality. And um, so whenever I had a chance to do music or make music, that, that was it. Everything else was secondary. Which was a good thing at times and a bad thing at times. It got me into trouble at sometimes, but I was like, nah, I've got to, what do you know what I mean? So I guess the transition happened that year. Um, there was like a, I knew I'd failed uni because I'd, I'd missed so many deadlines and stuff like that and um, had that, you know there's that period where it's like you've got three months before you start second year Yeah. and that's when I got signed and then Oopsie Daisy came out like during that period so I was like thank you, oh yes and then I, and then I failed uni as I expected and then just got signed again as an artist because I got signed as a songwriter first and then I got signed as an artist and so from there, it's just been like uphill, so I made the right choice in the end. So, I thought, because a lot of people will want to be, let's say, quote unquote, in your position. Mm -hmm. um, is it is it difficult now? Because, as you said, there are, you may not want to put expectations, but there are going to be expectations from, from the label. So, do you ever feel any pressure when you're to deliver hits for them? Um, there's always pressure to deliver, definitely. And um, I think I've just kind of learned that. Um, with like music, it's like you never know. So I don't ever like kind of take it too seriously because like for me, music is not a job. It's just like me. This is what I love doing. So um, whenever they're like, ah, oh, you know, you're in the studio with this person. This person's written this hit and that hit. He did this. Do you know who this is? It's like um, I'm like, okay, let's see what we make. And then even if the song's amazing. Because sometimes you might make an amazing song and then it never find a home. Like if I write an amazing song for a female and I think Beyonce would kill this or Brandy would kill this. And so I don't know. So I just always try and stay at a point where it's like I've made it and then on to the next one. And then if it comes, thank you. And if not, then. Wait, it's, it's, it's family must be important for you to also stay grounded because definitely you, a lot of your friends will feel oh you're in this studio yeah like, I try and keep as many like people around me as I can so like when I've got a show I bring like as many friends as I can and like um, invite like my sisters and my friends and my cousins if I've got a video shoot or something because I think when you've got people around you that um, I think it, it definitely helps me and I'm definitely happier and like I can enjoy it and share like my feelings and like my ideas of people and they could be if I do something wrong people are like nah and it's, like, it's different if like someone said to me, like someone from the label was like ah oh, I didn't like that it's different from when a friend says that was rubbish you know? do you know what I mean so it's nice to have that balance this thing that, yeah that person there that can just be like don't do that again yeah when you did that do you know what I mean so it's cool recording you're talking about you know the whole image thing that you've yeah. got going on I mean how's it been with the ladies it must be helping yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> they like it when I take my top off. <laughs> I don't understand what, what the big deal packs <laughs> and stuff. No, no, it's cool, man. It's nice. Because um, you work hard and then, do you know what I mean? Like, I'll be running in my area thinking, wow, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. And then I think all the fans want to see 
Do you know what I mean? So if you look at the humanoid video, you can see that I was like starved. I was eating like right. I love like junk food. I'm I'm a sucker for like some McDonald's and just some greasy chicken and <laughs> chips. And so I had to let all that go. And um, do you know what I mean? So now I'm trying to make it a lifestyle. Yeah. And not just like a something I do when I got a video. Yeah. So it's a big sacrifice. No McDonald's. Forever. So what are you what are you now then? Um well I've been, I've been bad. I just had some wagon mamas. Wagon mama. Like some katsu curry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're jealous, I know. I know. You're gonna try and get one mama. No, but I try I try and, you know, eat my fibres, like my cereals and stuff in the morning and then salad and then something. I try not to eat after six. I know it's one thing. Yeah, but make sure I eat right. And then, you know, do my exercising as well and drink lots of water, no snacks. It's terrible. Um, the album, <laughs> has it got a title yet or is it unfair? I'm thinking about calling it Gravity, but at the moment there's no solid name, I haven't. Yeah. And, again, we haven't been privileged to hear the album. Right. Is there a standout track for you on the album? Um, there's standout tracks, because I made, I made sure that um, I put a lot into the album, so every song on there is a good song. And so um, it's not one of them albums where there's like three singles and the rest of them are like songs you'll just skip. So I made sure every song on there does something crazy. Every song in there has a crazy lyric or something. Like even looking at Humanoid, Sergeant Smash and Good As Gold, Make You Mine, um, which is the one that's coming next. People can start seeing just the, the variation of the different types of music that's on there. And as I said, there's, I've got country songs on there, and I've got the R&B songs, and yeah, so it's it's a very eclectic collection of songs. And so, um, if you're one that's into interesting music and different music, and just wants to hear something different and told from a another point of view, make sure you get the album. You won't be disappointed. I promise.